I'm Dr. Benita Rattan from the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. So this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. Now the number one question I get asked all the time is, okay, Dr. V, so what exactly is skin of color and who counts? So the technical definition is, if you are more likely to tan rather than burn in the sun, you're considered to have skin of color. The reason being that your melanocytes are larger. Those are cells that produce the pigment melanin. They are larger and they are easier to trigger. This means that one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. And unfortunately, majority of the creams on, available on a majority actually of the professional treatments have been designed more for Caucasian skin than for skin of color, specifically for that reason, because we cannot afford to cause any inflammation on our skin. And really, this is why this channel exists. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator. And I love to go through brands and ingredients and tell you whether or not you should purchase something or whether you should steer clear. It's also really important for you to know that none of my videos have ever been sponsored and none of my videos will ever be sponsored. This is not my income stream. This is my passion project. This is my love letter to my skin of color community globally. My um, income streams come from my clinics in the UK. Um, and so I think it's really important for you to know that because you need an evidence-based resource specifically for skin of color, purely because there isn't one. There is nothing that hasn't been sponsored um, for skin of color. So I'm doing it for us and I'm doing it for our children. So today's video is very, very, well requested has been requested over and over again and it's basically how to remove facial hair from the skin and i'm sure if you watch any of my other videos where i reveal just how hairy i get you will know that i've been through the pain of removing facial hair now we have to be a little bit careful because removing facial hair can cause inflammation of the skin. And as you know, any form of inflammation can trigger the melanocytes. And I have seen burns from some forms of facial hair removal, which have le led to pigmentation. And honestly, the pigmentation is more stressful than the facial hair in the beginning. And so I think that this video really needed to be made. So if that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, so let's start off with the different forms of hair removal. The most important thing to do is to try and remove hair from the root. Then you have less chance of ingrown hairs taking place. And this is a problem for skin of color because when you get ingrown hairs, it leads to irritation, which also leads to pigmentation. So we want to avoid ingrown hairs. I've actually done a whole video on called razor bumps. Um, so it's worth you heading over and watching that if this is one of your issues. So ultimately, you want to start off by removing hair from the root. And the best ways to do this for the, uh, for the eyebrows and the upper lip area is via threading. I know it's a very old way of doing it, um, but really it's one of the best ways of doing it too. So it does give you, I've literally just done my eyebrows, so very proud of my eyebrows right now. <laughs> they, they, we do it on top, on the sides and underneath. And it gives you a very nice, sharp, defined brow. Um, and again, with the upper lip area, I've got quite a large upper lip and it's very painful. I basically spend the whole time crying. I could not be more pathetic. And when I tell them I'm a doctor, they, the first you know thing they say is, but you know, you can deal with needles. So what's a bit thread? <laughs> so yes, I'm pathetic. So um, they do. So we do the upper lip area this way too. You can tweeze. Um, unfortunately, tweezing can break the hair and can also lead to um, pinching of the skin while you're doing it, which can lead to irritation and also ingrown hairs too. So I'm not a huge fan of tweezing. I know we've all just been through COVID and lockdown and we may well have another lockdown and everyone's gonna be tweezing away at home, which is fine, um, but I do prefer threading. Uh, if you want, I can even show you how to thread at home. Uh, it's very simple, you just get a thread. In fact, let me show you now. So this is sitting on my dresser anyway. So here we've got a piece of thread and you just tie a little knot at the end. So that's how I do it. And now you've got your thread. I hope you can see it. Maybe I shouldn't have done black. 
and you just twist it around like an eight, a figure of eight. Try and keep the knot in the corner over here. And then you just can thread like this. And you can literally do a whole, your whole upper lip this way. So it's really simple, something you can do at home and that area then shouldn't be an issue. I find this much harder to do because the skin here for me is definitely thinner. Um, so I'd never do my own eyebrows, but upper lip is really simple. Chin is really simple to do this way. The other thing that you can do is use an epilator. So an epilator does exactly the same thing. It's basically like a giant uh, threader and you can remove larger areas of hair. However, it is so painful. If you've got a high pain threshold, great. You know, that's something that you can definitely be doing. Um, and also it doesn't cause any, because there's no chemicals used with tweezing, threading or epilators, you're not going to get any reaction to any chemicals. Um, you, we, you may well get inflammation from irritating as you're pulling the hair out, in which case I definitely recommend that you eye straight away. So I know it's really pathetic, but when I go to get my, you know, waxing done or threading done or anything, I always take an ice pack with me um, and I just wrap it in a towel and I, as soon as it's done, I put it on. Um, and I think I'm basically the only one that does this because everyone laughs, everyone thinks this is just hilarious, but I do recommend it because you want to vasoconstrict. And I was trying to explain this. <laughs> I was like, we want to vasoconstrict. I don't want any inflammatory mediators in my skin. I don't want any pigmentation. And everyone thinks it's very funny, but you know, you, just look after your skin. I would definitely, when you go to the beautician, go and take your ice pack with you. Okay, so the next thing that you can do is waxing. Waxing has two different forms of waxing. Either you use hot wax or hard wax, which they literally, they put it on and then they pat it and they, they rip it off. Um, make sure your skin is taut so they're not, you're getting minimum movement of skin, which will also minimize how much inflammation is taking place. Um, or they can use strip wax. Prefer, I prefer hot wax just because um, I feel like there's less irritation taking place of the skin. But again, I would definitely, if you're going to do that, there are a few things you need to know. Number one, do not exfoliate for four weeks before. I don't want, as it is, this is going to rip off the top layer of skin. Okay, so it's almost like you're doing an exfoliation. So don't do it if you've, you know, used any exfoliator in the last four weeks or if you've used vitamin A, because don't forget vitamin A is turning over skin cells much faster. Um, and it's, it's just not a good idea to do that and then do this almost physical exfoliation at the same time because again, can lead to more irritation and inflammation. Um, what else do you need to know? Also, obviously avoid it if you've got a sensitive or inflamed skin. So I would not recommend this for someone who's got rosacea or anyone who's got acne. Don't forget acne is inflammation of the skin. That's, that's what's happening with your skin. The free fatty acids are very irritating and that's what's leading to the red marks and the brown marks with acne. So definitely I would not do waxing of the face if you are prone to acne um or if you have live acne on the skin i'd also avoid it if you're on accutane so again that's a form of vitamin a but a far it's one of the strongest forms that you can you can use and your skin becomes very sensitive with it um also avoid it if you're on antibiotics because that can also sensitize the skin so it's just a few things you want to be aware of when it comes to waxing the face because it is very harsh you know i wouldn't take this lightly and I think just be aware of these things and do what you can to minimize any inflammation. That's the best advice I could give you. I would also avoid any home waxing kits because the reason being that the temperature gauge is not very accurate and you this is a massive mistake. You wouldn't want to put something that's too hot on your skin and burn your skin for obvious reasons. A couple of other things to point out is if you're getting small little bumps forming, uh, red bumps, then that can be folliculitis, so inflammation of the hair follicles, in which case I wouldn't ever wax your face again after that. Um, and also um, if you're getting, getting any pain or swelling, you could be allergic to one of the ingredients in the wax. So that's also something to be mindful of. The next option is dermaplaning or shaving the face. So there's actually a lot of myths about this. Don't forget your normal hair comes out and it's tapered and that's why it feels quite soft. When you um, almost chop it in half, the hair, the hair then starts to feel quite prickly as it comes out. So it's not growing back thicker, it's just feeling more prickly. Um, which people generally don't like. Um, and so 
that's what you're noticing when after you shave the face or dermaplane. Um, so you can dermaplane. It is quite, it, don't forget, it's also a form of exfoliation, okay? So everything I just said for waxing, make sure you're also taking on board for dermaplaning because you don't want to be using vitamin A, you don't want to have exfoliated before, you don't want to be on Roaccutane, which is obviously a form of vitamin A, etc. So everything I've just told you about waxing is exactly the same for dermaplaning. Now with dermaplaning, if you want to do it, I do recommend using a pre-shaving oil in order to soften the skin and soften the hair so that you are less likely to get razor burns. And also only go over it once. So don't keep going over the area multiple times because you are leading to too much inflammation of the skin. So just bear those things in mind if you decide you want to dermaplane. The next popular one is hair removal creams. This is often actually where people start. I know this was the first thing that I did when I was, I don't know, 14, 15, 16. I don't even know, I can't even remember. But it was hair removal creams is how I started. I remember my mum gave me Veet and she's like, this is all I'm going to let you do. <laughs> so in hair removal creams, it's basically got calcium thioglycanate in it uh, or potassium thioglycolate in it too. So these basically um, just break the disulfide bond in keratin and so weakens it. And so when you wash your skin afterwards, you're, you'll have hair removal it should be painless and if you leave it on for too long it can lead to burns and pigmentation so it's really important for skin of color that we do not leave it on for too long also sometimes it does have fragrance in it and it does have other ingredients in it that are not great for your skin and so you may react so it's also really important to listen to your skin and make sure your skin is okay afterwards it's not feeling inflamed or itchy or red Okay, so the next option is laser hair removal. So I recommend you go and watch my laser video because I've gone into a lot of detail with laser. Um, I feel like it's a little bit out of the scope of this video, so definitely head over and watch it. But just in a nutshell, you want NDAG with a cooling system. So that's important. Um, the next potential option is electrolysis. Now this is basically heating the base of the hair follicle and this is not a good idea for skin of color. So I would definitely avoid electrolysis for us. So don't forget to download your free guide. The link is down below. I'm in the uh, comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So make sure when you subscribe, you hit that notification bell for all my videos. So you know I can try and answer as many questions as I can. Um, if you've got any other questions, please do write them down below. And obviously don't forget to follow me on Instagram um, at Skincare by Dr. V and at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. I'm now also on TikTok and I'm doing five videos a week on TikTok on teaching skincare for skin of colour. Uh, and I'm trying to make them young because I'm not that young. So I'm trying to become hip like the youngsters. So make sure you watch that too. That's Dr. Vanita Ratan on TikTok. Thank you very much.